wish to reward them in the pious phase years of service to his people. They flung from their dwelling place a sacred monolith that pierced the ground in Alpha Moon, causing a spring to gush forth from the dry sand, the purest and most abundant waters in the region. In thanksgiving for this bounty from the heavens, this temple and all within it was erected, where Sawan, the traveler, guards the yellow gem. Welcome, Vladimir Miel, Severance Blade of Darkness, and we are now in the Temple of Al Faroom. This is where Sawan met his resting place. Um, this is where the Amber Gem is hidden. We went through the Oasis and the Jeb for clues, and we found a gravestone with the epitaph stating that there is a gemstone in this temple and a another gemstone, the final gemstone, in the Forge of Zafra. So that will be our next stop. But right now, let us investigate this ancient tomb, this ancient temple. And look who's here to play. Here we go. Come on. Man, you don't play this game for one day and you kind of forget how to play it. <laughs> Definitely has a uh, pretty rigid skill set. A lot of requirements on the player's part. Something I really like about the game. But if you look, we really get a different landscape. You know, this is uh, Egyptian-y looking. And uh, we got two uh, numbskulls up there ready to put a little rain on our parade. And by rain, I mean arrow. So let's um, run after them. Let's not waste any time. Now, uh, there's plenty of a big ravines here, a lot of landscape, but really none of this were- well that guy just jumped to his death. Nice try! The other one seemed to fall down. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, I didn't forget about you. Come on. Hey! Oh, now you for yeah, as soon as, as soon as I turn my- Yeah, take that! Drink your rations. That's punishment. So with the time standing, uh, I have played through the dwarf a little bit longer, and to say um, I still feel the same way that I did, but it's a little, uh, some of the combos are pretty good. He's good on a gameplay standpoint, but I just don't feel much character from him, which is funny because he's one of the more interesting looking characters, but the barbarian and the knight are definitely hands down the highest ones. <laughs> That likes a freaking dodge. Bam! Oh. Too bad that wasn't a double kill. Oh well. Nothing like a death dealer. Show you what it means business. Don't know what I said. See, these archers you think would be nice to kind of kind of snipe yourselves and kill, but they have 1,700 hit points, and they're not any weaker than a regular orc, so I think all archers should have 40 hit points, so you can actually bow them, but it pretty much just makes the bow more and more of a utility uh, upon every instance you see an archer, because only the beginning archers in this game have 40 hit points, although the Yostas and the Majed did too, I don't know why. Don't test me, pork, all right? We're done with this stuff. So this looks like to be the main um, point of the temple here, and that's kind of where we're headed to. Whoa, sorry, get the hell out of your way. Let's head back here to get away from the way of the archers. And actually, we figure out exactly what exactly we need to do here. And uh, the first step is this. Water is the gift of the gods. 
so we offer up our water on the sacrificial altar, and thus shall we contemplate the grandeur of the gods. Well, you can say from that that Barbarian is definitely not unintelligent or uncivilized. He does know, you know, how to speak properly, so it's kind of nice that they don't follow that typical cliche or stereotype of a Barbarian. Okay, well, kind of a weird looking architecture. It doesn't look like you might want to go over here right away, but indeed the music says so. And like I said, you see all these different um, textures, hieroglyphics, I guess, if you will. Not really literature or anything, calligraphy of any of that sort, but still the textures are all pretty, pretty uh, different for the most part. Like this big wall here has like this kind of angel looking hieroglyphic, kind of like a harpy or some sort. Very cool. But, uh, oh, hey. Orc, I guess you didn't see me, but uh, our main focus is the Archer over here because he would make our day a living hell. But we got to him first! Thank you very much. But we're not finished with you yet. This whole perimeter is swarming with Archers, and uh, that is exactly what we uh, want to take care of first. We'll sneak up if we can. Nope. <laughs> Very good. All right. I love that music, man. That's that pounding orc music, like always. So cool. Like I said, we had a nice reprieve from it on the North Fortress of uh, Nemrut. Oh, you son of a... Someone following me. Oh, hey! You better hope you block that. Ooh. Gotcha! Empty bottle? Looks like something we could hold sacred water in, if you ask me. Oh, even though I feel like I didn't get hurt much, I have been feeling it. These enemies hurt worse. They may be the same enemies we've seen in level 2, but they uh, are also... Uh, they kind of level up as you level up in the sense. I think, like, I think they're two levels lower, or, or not two levels lower, but they can be two levels lower. I don't know. Maybe they're set. But I'm pretty sure if I would have went here first, because I could have got here before the Gorge of Orlac and the uh, Fortress of Nimrud. If I would have went through the Oasis before going to the Chalotoir Fortress, Fortress uh, that would have been... I would have been here first, and obviously they couldn't be this tough. That would be a little messed up, and ob making you obviously the wrong choice where you pick. So, I think... I still think this is the best way to go, though, in terms of route. Oh, wow, there's an orc right there. Holy shit. Come on. Shit. Whoa, didn't get you, huh? Fine. Our main mission is to take care of all of these um, orcs that are in the way. Like you! Coming for ya! Whoa, free camp! Oh god. Piss off! As you can see, a lot of the orcs, a lot of the enemies are carrying potions, like, everywhere. Like, you're getting potions everywhere, so it's kind of nice. You know, I actually don't, I actually can have more than less than my half of my hit point. I think the part one, I said that I'd most likely have less than my half hit point, half of my hit points, like, all the time. So it's nice that it's kind of, kind of changed that around, finally. Still, it's not by a great amount, but better than nothing. What we got down here? I don't think anything of interest for us. We got the combat axe, which is the, I think the highest level axe for the dwarf. So, uh, I don't know how that fares. I haven't gotten to that yet. Oh, hello. Just one part of the death dealer is all that's needed. Yes. I freaking love this sword. It's gonna be hard to replace this sword. 
Surely I can sneak up on this guy. He's not even facing me. Right? Uh, looks like I'm passing the threshold. Oh, nope. Useless, man. <laughs> I don't understand that. Whatever. But I happen to know that all these walls kind of have the suspicion of being breakable, and indeed one does. And it's not that one. <laughs> I mean, it's this one. There you go. Don't embarrass me. Like I said, more light potion? Bam! Getting it back up. Boosh! Nice. Alright, we've got torches. Don't know if I'm really concerned by that right now. Let's, uh, let's jump back. <laughs> oh, we got another side. On the other side here, we got another altar. So what's this going to be? Fire Oracle. The light of the sun is a fire that forges the will of his servants in the furnace of the desert. We offer you the sacred fire. Grant us the grace to contemplate your countenance. Countenance and grandeur. That's the, uh... Two things we're trying to done the count on, apparently. Alright, so a torch for possibly sacred fire, and we got an empty bottle for sacred water. Looks like a nice little uh, combination, if you ask me. So let's see, I think we missed one place because I wanted to deal with the orc, and that is down here. Yes. Another light potion 500. Once again, I can use it. Nice. Almost back to full hit points. Didn't even level up yet. <laughs> hey, I did not do that. See, this is basically... Uh, I, I really enjoy this level. I think it has a lot of depth to it. I found a glitch. The Barbarian, if you hug against the wall, you can easily... Uh, you get like an extra stepping stone. But uh, we want to get to that middle area, and it's actually not essential. It's not essential, believe it or not. So if we don't plummet to our depths into that shallow moat, hopefully we can make this tight jump. Okay. So far, so good, and made it. I know it's coming up. Once again, the little wall looks a little suspicious, and indeed it does. But before we do that. Oh, what? What, can I... I don't think punching could even hurt this guy. <laughs> Give me back my ice axe, please. Thank you. Yeah, ice axe is a pretty good substitute for a blunt weapon because of the special ability it does. All right, open says me. And in here, you got nothing but suspicious music drop and just a dead end. So obviously something's up. Just look up a little f a bit further. There you go. The final rune. Looks a little bit dangerous. can only imagine. Something tells me I either don't want to step on the rune plates or I do. I'm going to say do. Alright, what happens if you don't? Oh, okay, that's what happens. Gotcha. Looks like we solved that pretty easily. No problem. And our reward? The final rune. 